My name is Tom Koch and I'm your MC this evening. I want to welcome you to the 10th annual St. Edmund's Medal of Honor ceremony. Our final honoree this evening is Maria McFadden Mafucci. To introduce Maria, I invite Michael Avery, Board of Trustee member, to come to the podium for the presentation. For those of you who don't know the Human Life Review, you ought to know that publication. A recent Gallup poll, in fact this year, showed that more Americans are pro-life than pro-choice. And much of that... <laughs> much of that uh, credit ought to go to the, to the work that the McFadden family have done. Maria's father started the Human Life Review in 1973 after he heard of the Roe v. Wade decision. He was at that time a member on Bill Buckley's staff at National Review, and he decided that he was going to dedicate his life to changing that decision and changing the hearts and minds of Americans. Maria has taken on that effort and has taken it on with such bravery and courage and such virtue that she stands as truly an American patriot as well as an exemplary Catholic. Ronald Reagan said that the great majority of the American people have not yet made their voices heard and we cannot expect them to about this issue any more than the public voice arose against slavery until the issue is clearly formed and presented. That is exactly what the Human Life Review has done. As a young man, I actually read Ronald Reagan's article in the Human Life Review. And by that, you can imagine that there are many other luminaries, intellectuals who write for this great publication. Maria is the editor of the Human Life Review and the president of the Human Life Foundation. Mother Teresa said that abortion is the greatest danger to peace because it is a direct attack on the child. And Mother Teresa also said that the way to stop abortion is by love. And she re reminded her audience at the time that you must work until love hurts. Such a description befits Maria. I should like to read the inscription on her award. The St. Edmund's Medal of Honor presented to Maria McFadden Mafucci, October 18th, 2013. There are so many delightful words to describe Maria McFadden Mafucci, gracious, cordial, warm, and welcoming. She possesses a quiet confidence behind a charming smile. Maria is truly a great defender of life continuing a legacy begun by her parents, James and Faith. Unwavering in her convictions, Maria guides and inspires us daily with her advocacy on behalf of the voiceless. As editor of the Human Life Review, a quarterly journal now in its 30, 30th consecutive year of publication, Maria's work challenges our society to confront and address the issues of dignity and the sanctity of life in the, from the first moment of conception. The foundation and the journal feature a variety of life issues under Maria's leadership and provides a reasoned voice and scholarly forum to discuss a wide range of issues that reflect a society sharply divided on the most basic moral questions. That is, what does it mean to be created in the image and likeness of God? As executive director of the Human Life Foundation, Maria guides the foundation in the pursuit of providing alternatives to abortion and safeguarding the dignity and sanctity of both the mother and the child. The foundation manifests our understanding of the dignity and sanctity, not only in word, but also in deed. The foundation sponsors grants to help support crisis pregnancy, pregnancy centers around the country. Through her life as wife and mother, 
as an editor and executive director of a nonprofit organization, as a community and church leader, as a philanthropist and compassionate woman, Maria manifests to the world the challenge of the Lord to be a woman of faith, to use her energy and her abilities to improve the lives of others and to be a beacon of hope. Therefore, in the tradition of St. Edmund, Archbishop of Canterbury, Maria McFadden Mafucci is recognized as an ordinary woman living, living an extraordinary life. She truly is a woman of virtue, truth, and grace. It is therefore the distinct honor and high privilege of the Board of Trustees of St. Edmund's Retreat to bestow upon Maria McFadden Mafucci the St. Edmund's Medal of Honor for service to the church and to the community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ovari. And thank you to the St. Edmund's Retreat Board of Trustees and Father Tom for this wonderful medal. I would like to thank my friend and colleague, Nicholas Diorio, for introducing me to beautiful Enders Island and to Father Tom. And I would like to offer my heartfelt admiration for all the medal recipients I share this honor with tonight. It is truly an honor to be included among you, and I am so touched and awestruck to hear everyone who's gone before me. St. Augustine said that the first virtue is humility. And one def definition of humility is seeing oneself in the proper context. So to start, I am here tonight because I was given a great gift. And that was the privilege of continuing my late father's legacy in defending the unborn by shepherding the Human Life Foundation forward after his death in 1998. Our journal, The Human Life Review, was founded to educate people about the sheer illogic of the Roe v. Wade and Doe v. Bolton decisions and the awful tragedy of abortion. Almost 40 years later, we are working to get more and more thinking people aware of the need to defend the unborn, the disabled, and the frail elderly from the encroaching culture of death. From a purely secular viewpoint, we ought to know that any time that any one class of humans is deemed unworthy of life, none of us are safe. But more essentially, as we all know here tonight, each person is made in the image and likeness of God. Human life is sacred. We are rejecting God's goodness when we accept abortion, euthanasia, or assisted suicide. The Human Life Review has an engaging mix of articles from timely investigative journalism to thoughtful philosophical essays to book reviews and even cartoons. It is the journal of record of the pro-life movement and it insists that the only intelligent side to be on is the side of life. I invite you all to contact us for a free issue and join us in our mission. My father and my mother, who died two years ago, gave me the greatest gift parents could, the certainty that I was loved, and faith in a loving God who could make all things work out for the good. Through my family, I also learned, as we lost my brother Robert at a very young age, that God's plan may be terribly difficult at times, it's tempting to abandon the good when bad things come and you don't understand why. That is when we need to reach out to the others in our lives. As Christians, we meet Christ in the others he gives us. My most significant other is my husband, Bob. I spent quite a few years worrying if I would ever meet the right man. I needn't have worried because I did and at just the right time in my life. Bob's steadfast love, calm strength, and deep-rooted faith have made all the difference for me. I'm not sure that I could have remained steady on the path God set before me without him. And I can't see him to this time. 
We have three beautiful children, James, Anna, and Grace, who we learn from every day. I am also blessed to have good friends from Holy Cross here tonight, Rosemary and Paul, Paula and Jim, and my good friend Cecile from the Human Life Foundation crew. I'd also like to wish another extra special person a happy birthday. My sister Christina, who is here with her family, Andrew, Rachel, and Sophia. I remember when Tina was brought home from the hospital as a tiny, tiny baby. And she also works for the foundation and is my right arm, and I love her very much. My mother's signature flower was the sunflower, and I was touched to read that the sunflowers in the illustration of St. Edmund represent the followers of Christ straining toward the Son of God as the sunflowers strain their faces toward the sun. So I accept this medal in loving memory of my mother Faith and with the promise that I will try hard to be worthy of it. Thank you.